So understand that if we reduce the angle between the apparent power and the active power, we will thereby reduce the reactive power, which we have to increase now our power factor. So the, 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 the whole idea about all this now is for us to be able to increase the power factor in such a way that we will have it nearly equal to one. By so doing, we'll be able to reduce all the, the reactive power, then we'll be able to utilize all the power that is living from the National Electricity Supply Company coming to our building. This is very important. Good day, everyone. You're watching Makoga Enterprises. Today, we are going to be discussing on power factor. So we are going to understand what is power factor and then to know exactly how do we um, improve our power factor in our building. Supposing that we have a building and we have um, power that is living from the national utility company coming to our building. Majority of the questions that people will be asking is that, why is it that we are not able to utilize all the amount of power that is living to the national, from the national electricity company coming to our building? The major reason is because of poor power factor. When we have poor power factor, we will end up not able to utilize all the power that is living from the national, uh, um, the, the, from the national electricity company coming to our building. It has a very big role as far as power system is concerned, and majority of the buildings are facing these same issues. So we are going to be driving you through all this journey and to understand what is power factor and so that we know exactly how to improve power factor for us to be able to utilize all the amount of power that is living from the national supply company coming to our building. First and foremost, we need to understand what is power factor. Power factor is a cosine phase angle difference between current and voltage, or we can still define it as the ratio between the active power to the upper power. So understand that if we reduce the angle between the upper power and the active power we will thereby reduce the reactive power, which we have to increase now our power factor. So the, 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 the whole idea about all this now is for us to be able to increase the power factor in such a way that we will have it nearly equal to one. By so doing, we'll be able to reduce all the, the reactive power then we'll be able to utilize all the power that is living from the National Electricity Supply Company coming to our building. This is very important. The Washing Makoka Enterprises, please do like, share, subscribe, and keep sharing, as well as turn on the notification button so that when anytime we upload a new video, you're going to be notified. And thanks for watching and keep watching. Okay, today's topic, like I did mention, is power factor correction power factor correction. So we are going to be using capacitor banks to improve the power factor. So if you go to majority of the buildings or majority of um, facilities, you notice that we use power factors, we have used rather capacitors to improve power factor in our different buildings. So I drive you now to the definition, which is power factor is a cosine of the phase angle between current and voltage, or we can still have it as um, the ratio of the true power or the active power to the apparent power. So before we dive into understanding how to improve the power factor, we need to understand the different kind of loads that we have in our buildings or the different types of loads. So firstly, we have the resistive loads. So if you notice for the resistive loads, we have current and voltage are all in phase, as you can see on on our sign or solar waveform. For example, we have in, uh, incandescent lamps, we have toasters, we have ovens, we have uh, space heaters and coffee makers, etc. So for inductive loads, we have also this inductive load. So inductive load, we have um, the current, the voltage, the current is uh, the current is out of phase with the voltage. The same way we have the current also out of phase with the voltage for the capacitive loads. So we have three different kind of loads. We have the resistive loads, we have the capacitive load, and then we have the resistive loads. Or rather the resistive loads, the capacitive loads, and the inductive loads. 
So like I did mention, initially on the resistive flows, we have current and voltage are all in phase. So for the inductive load, we have current or the uh, voltage is leading the current by 90 degree. So we have capacitive loads, which we have rather the current, the voltage now is leading the current by 90 degree. So for inductive loads, we have an example, which is we have electromotors, we have contactor coils, we have relay coils, we have fans, vacuum uh, cleaners, we have dishwashers, we have washing machines and compressors, refrigerators, etc., etc. So we have different type of loads when it comes to the inductive loads. Then we have capacitors for the capacitive loads. Okay, I will drive us now to an example so we get to understand exactly how the power factor has a role to play as far as for us to be able to utilize all the amount of power that is living from the national electricity company coming to our building. So supposing you go to, to buy a beer and then they pour out the beer into a glass, we will have the glass, as you can see here, we have the drink that is being poured or the beer, and then we will have foam. The part which you see up here, which is the foam, this we will call the reactive power. And then the, the beer itself that is right below, this is what we call the real power. So this is the active power, what we are using or what we are consuming. So after buying the beer, we will consume the real power or the active power. This is the, the actual power that we are consuming. And the reactive power now is the power which we are not consuming, but we still have to buy all of the beer. So all this package now is what we buy and to consume. But we'll turn up now to consume only the portion down and then the foam up will not be able to consume. So as you can see here, we have this in kilowatts, which is the real power, the active power, which is the part which we are consuming. As you can see here, which is the usable electricity. And then top here, which is the foam, is the reactive power, which is kilovolt ampere reactive, which is the wasted power or the wasted electricity. So the sum of, or the algebraic sum of both powers, that is the real power and the reactive power, it's what we call the apparent power. This is the power now which is required for us to purchase from the National Electricity Company or the total drink that we are going to purchase in order to consume. But we final, we, we end up now consuming only the real power, then the reactive power will not be able to consume bed, we end up to buy all the amount of beer. So I'll move to the next slide. On the next slide now we have um, a triangle which has an impedance, it has a resistance and it has a um, reactance. We have here also an apparent power which is in S, we have an active power which is in P and then we have reactive power which is in Q. As shown above, as we reduce the angle, this is the angle, power factor improves by increasing or power factor improves or increases, which reduce the reactive power. This is the reactive power. So when we reduce the angle between apparent power and active power, we we'll thereby reduce the reactive power, thereby increasing the power factor, which reduce the reactive power. We improve the power factor to be able to use Either lose at least 90 or 95 percent of the demand power which we are requesting from the National Electricity Company. 